Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'd like to get a clear picture of the Fed's comprehensive exit strategy in a number of areas. Assuming the Fed's economic projections hold, uh, can we expect the QE bond purchasing to end sometime this fall? So we have indicated that as long as we continue to see improvement in the labor market and we believe the outlook is for continued progress, and as long as we continue to believe and see evidence that inflation will move back up over time to our to our two percent longer run objective, we anticipate uh, continuing to reduce the pace of our asset purchases in measured steps. Right. So the answer is yes. Now if something were to change notably about the outlook, we would reconsider that plan. But um, if, if those conditions hold, we would continue on our current course. I'll yes. leave it to my colleagues to ask about the notably different changes just so we, beyond that, we have the Fed holds $4.7 trillion on the balance sheet, extraordinarily large. When do you expect to begin normalizing the size of the Fed's balance sheet? Is there a range of years? So um, when we complete the asset purchase program, uh, the committee has indicated that um, it expects a considerable, it will be a considerable time before we begin to normalize policy in the sense of uh, beginning to uh, raise our target for short-term interest what, rates. What, what range, well, let's move to that, but before I do, what's the appropriate size? Do you have an appropriate size for the Fed's balance sheet? I can't give you a number that would be the, an appropriate size. Um, we, I believe the committee anticipates that our balance sheet over time will move down to substantially lower levels uh, than it is now, whether or not it will ultimately return to pre-crisis levels is something that uh, we will, or remain somewhat larger, is something that we will determine as we gain experience with exit. Um, one way that we're likely to uh, turn to to normalize the size of our balance sheet eventually would be to uh, cease reinvestment of, print of, of principal as it comes due. The committee is not given definite guidance at this point about when it would take the step of, uh, of stopping reinvestment of maturing yeah. principal. Uh, and eventually, as we come closer to normalization, I expect we will give such guidance. When do you expect on normalizing interest rates, when, when do you expect that to begin, assuming the Fed's economic projections hold? So what we have said in our most recent guidance is that in determining uh, when that time uh, is, has, is right, we will be looking at uh, how much progress we have actually made in coming close to our uh, mandate from Congress to attain maximum employment and inflation of 2 percent, and we'll evaluate uh, the pace at which we expect progress going forward. Um, concretely, the, the committee indicated that at the time the purchase program ends, uh, it thinks that it will be a considerable time beyond that before it will be appropriate to begin that process. And the reason is that under its baseline outlook, it um, would like to see or expects it will need to see further progress in the labor market, and it's emphasized that the level of inflation will also, will also matter. If the Fed's economic projections hold, you know, what is that range? If I were to say you'll begin normalizing interest rates in 2015, would I be wrong? So there is no mechanical formula or timetable for when that will occur. But I know, in my, I know that you've worked through your projections going forward, and certainly if those were to hold, you have some range of time that you'll begin that process. What, what range is that? So. The committee has simply said a considerable time without um, mechanically stating what that time interval is. Is considerable 
if this were if I were to say this will begin normalizing 2016 would I be wrong so again there is no specific timeline for doing that um, individual members of the Federal Open Market Committee however um, every three months um, provide their own forecasts for how they see the economy evolving under appropriate monetary policy and that becomes a basis for discussion in the committee and you can look at those projections that uh, include individual participants um, expected sure. paths for normalization you would see that most members uh, believe that uh, in 2015 or 2016 normalization would begin under their baseline outlook. Do you, to put it in perspective, what, what, what year, what range of years could we expect the target rate to reach 2%, for example? So I think the answer is that it depends on the evolution of the economy. Um, what we're focused on is adjusting our monetary policy in light of uh, incoming evidence about the evolution of the economy. But if it holds, uh, granted, uh, obviously all this dependent from your view on economic performance, but given your projections, you know, how far are we looking at to just move about halfway back to normalization? So again, I, I'm afraid I can't give you a timetable, but the committee did try to, in its uh, recent statements in March and April, provide some guidance to the public about the pace at which it expects uh, interest rates, to short-term rates to increase um, once that process is started. Yeah. And what they said is that they think it will take some time even after the economy is, in a sense, functioning normally, namely we're operating at full employment and inflation's around 2%, they, they think it's likely it will take some time to come back to normal or historically average levels of interest rates. Uh, Short-term interest rates, they would see as uh, normal levels based on history of something on the order of 4%. And they have indicated that they think it's going to take some time to reach levels like that. I would emphasize that that's a forecast. It's not a promise. Sure. But we've had headwinds that have acted on the economy and headwinds in the global economy and perhaps a slowdown in the pace of growth in the economy. And those are some of the factors that uh, lead them to believe uh, a gradual pace of interest rate increases will prove appropriate. Understood. Fed holds about 1.6 trillion residential mortgage-backed securities, a large amount. So again, assuming the Fed's economic projections hold, when do you expect to begin moving them back into the market, reverse repos or, or other approaches? What, what range of years? And I do worry, I think there'll be political resistance when you take those steps, but what, what years will you see that occurring? So we have indicated that we do not intend to sell mortgage-backed securities from our portfolio, except perhaps um, when the holdings are very small to um, eliminate some residual holdings. So eventually, and the committee hasn't decided on the timing of this, we're likely to cease reinvestment of principal and uh, at that point, uh, our holdings of mortgage-backed securities would begin to decline over time as, um, as principal matures. And so it would take a period of some years for our holdings to uh, diminish, yeah. to be worked Final off. question really about bank reserves, $2.6 trillion. It is, uh, for many, including me, a potential fuel for inflation. When the economy strengthens and banks begin to lend, we hope sooner rather than later, uh, to keep rapid inflation check, uh, will you raise reserve requirements or the rate of interest paid on the reserves? Do you have a view at this point? Well, it's my expectation that when the time comes to raise the level of short-term interest rates, um, that we will certainly raise the interest rate that we pay on excess reserves and are likely to use a number of 
complementary tools that we have developed, including our toolkit includes overnight uh, reverse repos, uh, term, term repos, and our term deposit facility. Um, we will use those tools to push up the general level of short-term yeah. interest rates, but interest on reserves will be uh, a key tool Mine that too. we will be using. What impact will that have on economic growth? Well, we will only be taking that step when um, we have judged that the economy is strong enough, that economic growth is sufficient, the labor market has recovered enough, and inflation is moving back toward 2 percent, we will have judged that the time is appropriate to tighten financial conditions in order to make sure that we don't overshoot our inflation objective. And so, um, the effect that it will have on the economy is to restrain the economy uh, to make sure that we don't allow inflation to rise uh, above our longer term objective. Thank you. And just, I'll conclude with this. My main concern, having served on the committee, in the early to mid 2000s, you were able and very, high, very highly respected predecessors sat where you sat and assured the committee that maintaining low interest rates for an extended period wouldn't cause general price, price inflation or inflate an unsustainable asset bubble, which didn't prove to be the case. After the credit-fueled housing bubble burst in 2007, your predecessors assured the committee, the predecessor, that this would, uh, the committee that the resulting weakness would be confined to the subprime segment of the housing market and the damage would be limited to about $150 billion, so roughly the cost of the SNL crisis. Following the financial crisis in the fall of 2008, we were repeatedly assured the Fed had the strategy to exit from the large expansion of its balance sheet to normalize monetary policy, including the federal funds target rate. Yet the goalposts have been moved time and time again and now removed. And today you've assured the committee once again, and I so appreciate you, your testimony, that the Fed is confident it can exit without sparking high inflation but that we can't know the details or the timetable, um, but that the Fed and the FOMC have it essentially handled. I don't expect the Fed to be perfect. This is, yours is a tough job, theirs is a tough job, but it just strikes me this, over time, this don't worry, be happy monetary message isn't working, at least in my view for the committee certainly not for the economy at this point. And I know my colleagues will ask about today's Wall Street Journal where noted economist, Federal Reserve historian Dr. Alan Meltzer makes the point, never in history as a country that's financed big budget deficits with large amounts of central bank money avoided inflation. My worry is that the track record of central banks, including the Fed, in identifying these economic turning points and actually acting quickly to prevent inflation, um, that track record track record is not as good as we would like. So forgive me for being skeptical. Um, I believe we need more specifics and a clear timetable on the comprehensive exit strategy. With that, again, thank you so much for being here, uh, Ch uh, Vice Chair.